In this video, we're going to be discussing how to import QuickTimes and sound into your Harmony projects. I'm going to go to File, Import, and go to Movie. And I'm going to choose my QuickTime by double clicking it. And right now it's converting movie to images, which means it's taking each of the frames and converting them into a PNG file. Give it a second. Da, 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 da. And what's important to remember or realize is that your QuickTime frame rate should match your Harmony frame rate as well. So if you're working at 24 frames per second, they should all be the same so that your playback is the same and consistent. So here's our import image dialog box. It's giving us an opportunity to name the layer if we want. Our import options, we're going to keep it as an original bitmap for now. And we'll keep these options as they are. I'll hit OK. Let it think, da-da, and there's all of our frames brought in. We can hit enter, and our animatic is playing back. This is just an animatic. And because it is a layer, it allows us to resize it and position it with the transform tool so we can move it out of the way as we work, scale it up, what have you. We'll leave it like that for now. I'm going to save really quickly. One thing I would like to just warn you about is that this can potentially create pretty large file sizes. If we were to go into the element folder of this scene, you'll see it creates a folder of the same name of your QuickTime. And if I was to go in there, there is all of our, here's all, here's all of our PNG images. That's these guys right down here in our timeline. Right now, this is only 50 megs, which isn't terrible. 50 megabytes, which is not, it's not excessive, but it I, it can be if you are not careful. So it may be worth doing a little bit of experimentation to see what works best for you. So why don't we import some sound to go with this? We do the same thing. We go to File, we go to Import, and we go to Sound. And I have a little splash audio sound effect that we can bring in. And just by hitting play, we hear our splash sound effect. If you are not hearing any audio, it's most likely because your audio is not turned on. Go to the play back section, toolbar, excuse me, and make sure that sound is turned on. If I turn it off and I hit play, nothing happens. Turn it on, there's our audio. The one next to it is also very handy. It's our scrubbing feature. It's a speaker with a little S coming out of it that allows us to grab the playback head and go back and forth with it in time to fine tune where we would like it to start and stop. I'm going to keep it on, it's very handy. So let's talk about moving or positioning this audio in a way that makes a bit more sense for the scene. A very quick and dirty way would be to just make a selection and drag it in our timeline. And sure, that certainly would work. However, it's prone to making mistakes on your part because if you only grabbed maybe part of it, all of a sudden our audio goes, Wah! it dies in the middle there, which is undesirable. Undo that. We can do it a bit more of a cleaner way by using the sound editor. We do that by double clicking our layer down here. Here's our sound element editor. And the top part is our sound. I'm gonna click it to, act to activate it. And the little one here, this little green one, is our frame number. It's right now currently starting on frame one. If I was to click and grab our frame one here and drag it, you'll see it updating. And now it's going to start on frame, oh, 16, wherever I need to put it. And you'll see it updates down here on the timeline as well. So let's find a spot that makes sense. Um, na -na -na -na. Right now she's, so around one second in, frame 24 is where her foot hits the ground. So we can push this down to, eh, let's try, this little spike here is probably where our audio is starting, but there's there's some splash before that. Let's try that. Let's try frame 22, starting at a frame 22. Coming a little early still. We can push it down, nudge it. Let's try 26. That's better. Feels better to me. I'm gonna draw your attention to the bottom. You'll see the little 44, that's this yellow, right now it says 44, uh, is like an envelope that's denoting the ending of our 
selected audio track. If I drag that guy this way and look down here in my timeline, you'll see that it's kind of truncating it. Ugh! Suddenly drops off. So this is a quick way of editing our sound as we see fit. I'll make sure I drag it all the way across to make sure it grabs all of our splash. So we get a nice splash sound effect timed to when her foot falls into the puddle. That'll do it for this video. Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.